All right, so I wanna go over different ways you can keyframe and edit those keyframes inside Maya. So I'm just gonna create a random item. i move it up to the ground. And then I'm just going to set some keyframes. So uh, if I'm moving an item from one point to the other, um, I can um, hit S and it'll set a keyframe on everything. It's typically not a good idea to do that because it sets keyframes on everything. Even though I'm moving it from one spot to the next, um, it sets keyframes for all of these items. So anytime you set keyframes, you really wanna limit it to what you're keying. So uh, one way to do this is to right click on the item and say key selected, and that will key just that item. Then I can go up to, let's say 30, scoot the ball across the field, and key selected again. So now when I hit play, I'll be able to see the ball moving across the thing, okay? Now that's uh, an okay way to do that. I'm gonna right click and all of these things here are different ways you can modify your keys. Um, so things like cut, copy, paste, delete. Uh, I'm just gonna hit delete and they'll get rid of that keyframe. The other way that I can do this is under my animation menu, I'm going to the key, set key option box. Uh, there is uh, an option here where I can say all keyable attributes from channel box. And what that means is if I click this, I click this translate X and then I hit set key, it locks in those settings so that when I come up here up to uh, 30 and move this across and then I hit S, it'll automatically set a key right on that one. I don't have to right click and do the key selected. It'll do just the whatever one I had selected here. If I don't have something selected there, and I hit S, it still does everything. So you gotta be careful of that. Just keep an eye on these uh, red markers. Um, and then obviously I can go here and then you know, move it back and then say S again. Okay, and it, it becomes a pretty easy workflow as long as you have that uh, item selected to move around and get those keyframes pretty quickly lined up. I'm gonna delete that again. Another way we can set keyframes is using Shift and then clicking on whatever the hotkey is for these specific ones. So if I wanna key all three of these and I hold down shift and hit W, it'll keyframe all three of those items, okay? I don't have to have it selected, I just hit shift W and it'll set a key. I'll scoot up to 30, slide it across, shift W again, and it sets a key for all three of those. Now in some cases you may want that. I may want the ball to move here. And then let's say at frame 60, I want it to go up. So now if I rewind this and hit play, it's gonna go straight and then up. And so in this case, I needed multiple keyframes in order to do that. Uh, I definitely could have gone through and just focused on the X, then focused on the Y, but this is a, a simple way to be able to do those type of attributes all at the same time. Um, if I wanna delete those, I can grab all three, right click and delete selected. If I wanna keyframe just the rotates, I can use shift E, no keyframe the rotates. Shift R will keyframe the scales, okay? I'll put that back to where he was at the beginning. Um, scale is one of those that typically you would set all three of these. Like it's a rare thing that I would ever grab one and scale it. Typically if I'm gonna grab this one and scale it, I would grab this one and scale it in. So it was always gonna be this um, uh, thing where I'm always scaling 90% of the time all three of my scales, unless I have a specific reason to not do that. Okay. So let's go, and I'm just gonna set some keyframes here. I go uh, Shift W. I'm gonna move up to 30. Shift W again, go up to 60. Go up to 90. Go up to 110. And now I just animated this ball moving. Okay. Now, if I wanted to adjust uh, any of these keyframes down here, I can use the dope sheet, window animation editors, dope sheet, or remember I have that hotkey for dope sheet right here. And as long as I'm in the move tool here, I can move these things around. Uh, I wouldn't grab the top and the bottom. Typically you wanna grab just the bottom and that's sufficient. Occasionally you may wanna grab the top ones if you're grabbing multiple ones or have multiple objects selected. So in this case, I'm gonna grab some of these keyframes and adjust their spacing. 
if an item is moving gradually faster, uh, the keyframes are going to move closer together. So here I have about 30 frames between them. Here I still have 30, so maybe this one I'm going to be in my move tool and just middle drag and bring that back some. Here I'm in my middle, um, my move tool still, I'm going to middle drag this back. And then I'm going to grab this one and then middle drag that one back. So gradually I'm getting faster and faster and faster with every iteration. So I'm going to scoot this over. Hit play. There we go. And so you can see how each one of these uh, things is happening faster. It goes up at a certain speed, comes down faster, goes up at a certain speed, comes down faster. Okay, so this really gives you the ability to edit where these keyframes are. Sure. The other thing that we can do is instead of using the dope sheet, you can use the graph editor for this kind of stuff. Uh, the graph editor is a bit trickier though because we have different attributes that's showing. It's showing us the X, the Y, and the Z in this case. Uh, all three of these. Now I haven't done anything with the X or the Z, so their graphs are flat. Uh, I could delete that, but let's pretend that I don't want to delete that because I'll be using it later. So I can use all three of these, grab all three of these, hold down, um, and make sure I'm in the move tool, hold down shift, and then middle drag back. And this is essentially doing the same thing that the dope sheet does, is allowing me to move the time left and right. Now with shift, um, I could have accidentally held shift and drag and accidentally went up with it, uh, and that would change the value and not the time, and that would be something different. Uh, it's also very difficult to see the spacing in here because it doesn't have as many uh, tick marks as the dope sheet does. So typically when I'm dealing with time attributes, uh, I don't go into the into the graph editor. I only worry about values in here. So how high is it going, how low is it going, that kind of thing. Or what is it doing between the keyframes, okay? So uh, I would not use the, the graph editor for doing that kind of thing, but you could. The other thing you could do is down here in the timeline, you can't click and drag on any of these keyframes to get them to move, but there is a shortcut key you can use to select them and then drag it. So if I hold down shift and I left or middle click and drag down here, it allows me to highlight that keyframe and then I can click on these arrows in the middle and drag it and adjust where its position is. Okay, now this is kind of neat too because let's say that I don't want this animation to last this long. I hold shift, I left click and drag along that to highlight all of them. And then I can grab on this far right arrow and drag this in. And now what this is doing is actually scaling these keyframes together. So now I hit play. And now we see how fast this is now moving. I need it less time, uh, shift drag again, or more time, sorry, drag that up, and then hit play again. And now we're able to do exactly that, okay? Um, so this is another area, sometimes if I'm just moving a keyframe or two around, I'll do that. Um, I may also uh, go in here and grab keyframes and move them. Now, one of the, the disadvantages of using that method is sometimes it'll actually put a keyframe between frames. So let's jump to the graph editor. We can see it really good in here. Now I'm going to marquee one of these frames. And you'll see this is the uh, current frame that it's on, 28.44. And this is the value that it has, 13.99. Same thing here. I grab this one. The frame is 72.71. And this one is 11.85. So... It will automatically, as we're moving and scaling and whatever in those, um, keep them kind of uh, proportionate so it will go in between the frames. If I go back to the graph editor, I can highlight everything though, go to edit and say snap, and then say I want to snap my time. And now when I highlight one of these, it's exactly at 28 or it's exactly at 73 or whatever. So now that I have this, I can adjust where those are at. Uh, the other thing I can do is if I go here, I right click, I can cut a keyframe, scoot down here, right click and paste that keyframe. Okay, same thing as this. If I can grab these and copy or cut, go down here, right click and paste. And so now I've just pasted those keyframes there. I can just keep pasting too, like if I have 
more and more and more of these. Wherever my ticker is, that's where it's going to put the keyframes. Whoops. I hit the wrong button. Just close that. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then you can also um, delete keyframes from here too. Cut, copy, whatever. Okay. So that's how we're able to uh, move around different keyframes that are inside of this. You can also, if you had for, a, let's say, I want to copy my translate Y here. Um, oops, let's rewind that. I'm going to copy. I can go to, let's say, scale Y, and then I could paste it, wherever paste went. There it is. Okay, now whenever I started uh, my ticker here, that's where it's going to start pasting. And so you'll see that now the scale Y is animating the same way that the scale uh, Z or the translate Y was. Okay, no specific reason to do something like that, but just so you can see, and I could do that from object to object as well, not just on that same object. So uh, those few things will definitely help you out when you're setting your keyframes and adjusting where their speeds are or where their where their timing is at.